Well, we will now look at question number 29 of the set D of the IIT JE 2017 main paper. And the question reads like, x into x plus 1 plus x plus 1 into x plus 2 plus and so on and on till we get to the final term x plus n minus 1 into x plus n is equal to 10n. So here we have been given an equation where we have terms of the form x into x plus 1 plus x plus 1 into x plus 2 and so on till we get to the final term x plus n minus 1 into x plus n and this entire expression on the left hand side is equated to 10 times n. And we now have been given that this given quadratic in x has two consecutive integral solutions and we have to find the value of n where n is a positive integer. Well, if you look at this equation on the left hand side correctly, you can rewrite this as summation of x into or rather summation of x plus r minus 1 into x plus r where r ranges from 1 to n. So if you look at this entire left hand side, you will write that as a product of these two terms when summed when r is equal to 1 to n. So if you put r is equal to 1, you get x. If you put r is equal to 1 here, you get x plus 1. Similarly, if you get r is equal to 1 here, you get, continue. Huh? Similarly, if you put r is equal to 2 here, you get the second term. Then if you put r is equal to 3, you get the third term and so on and on till you get to the final nth term. So we can now rewrite this given left hand side as summation of x plus r minus 1 into x plus r. Now this summation can be rewritten. I can also write, rewrite this as summation from r is equal to 1 to n of r plus x minus 1 multiplied by r plus x. Well, now I can further resolve this and I will get summation of r 1 to n of this entire product. Now this product can be expanded because there are two terms in this product. And so we can now write this as r square plus r into 2x minus 1 plus x into x minus 1. So I have now rewritten this in this form where I have expanded these two factors. Well, now note that here I can take a summation sign to r square separately. So I will get summation of r square. Then I will get a summation of r multiplied by 2x minus 1. And then I will get a summation of x into x minus 1, where r is the vari variable changing from 1 to n. So here also r varies from 1 to n. Here also r varies from 1 to n. And so I will rewrite these summation in terms of the formulas. Now I know that summation of r square, for formula for summation of r square is like this. Summation of r square is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1, the whole divided by 6. Where we are talking of range r ranging from 1 to n. Likewise, if you talk about summation of r, then the formula is given by n into n plus 1 divided by 2. And finally, we have summation of 1 is equal to n because we are talking of r ranging from 1 to n. So likewise, I've obtained these three formulas. And now I will use these three formulas in that equation. And so I can further rewrite this as note that this first summation is replaced by n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6. So I will rewrite here as n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6. So this entire first term is replaced by its equivalent value. Likewise, if you take 2x minus 1 out, because here r is ranging, so 2x minus 1 can be taken out. And then we will apply the summation to r. Now summation of r we know is n into n plus 1 by 2, which will be written here. So I will write n into n plus 1, the whole divided by 2. As far as the third term goes here, note that there's no r term inside. And so all these terms can be taken out of the summation sign. So we get the final result as x into x minus 1 multiplied by summation of 1, which is n. So here I will get a n. And I will equate this entire given left hand side to 10n because that has been given to us. So I get this kind of an expression. Well, in this equation, note that there's an n common. So I can strike out n from all these terms. And so I get another equation, which is n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 upon 6. Then we are left with plus 2x minus 1 into n plus 1 divided by 2. And finally, we have plus x into x minus 1 is equal to 10. This is because I've cancelled n from all the both the sides. And so now I've obtained this equation, which is a quadratic in x. Now rearranging this equation as a quadratic in x, I will write x square plus nx plus a constant equal to 0. Well, here note that x square is obtained from this term. 
if you talk about x terms, then you get a x term from here that is x into n plus 1, and you get a minus x from here. And so when you combine all the x terms, you will get a coefficient n. And so I get x square plus nx plus a constant is equal to 0. And now, because the constant value has to be found out, I will take the constant from this term. Well, note that I have combined the x square and x terms, and so all the terms that do not contain x have now to be combined. So I will take this first term, which is n plus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And then I will also have this constant, n plus 1 by 2, with a minus sign. And so I will write a minus of n plus 1 by 2. And further, if I take this 10 on the left hand side, I will get a minus 10 there. And so I will get a minus 10 as well. And this will be equated to 0. So this is the most important quadratic equation, which will lead us to our final solution. Well, note that this being a quadratic equation, I can take this entire term here and term it as a constant c. So I'm taking this entire term here and terming it as a constant capital C. And so I get x square plus nx plus c is equal to 0, where c is my entire this term. All these three terms combine me to give c. So now I obtain this kind of an expression. Now I can easily write the two values of x from this quadratic equation. Well, but before that, let me finalize my c. I have taken c here as c is equal to n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 upon 6. Then I have a minus of n plus 1 upon 2, and then I have a minus 10. So my entire c is this term. And I've replaced this entire term by c, so I get a quadratic of this form. And then I will get two roots, which say are x1 and x2. Well, when you talk about two roots, x1 and x2, then we have a single expression for the two roots, which is of this form. Note that because this is a quadratic in x, its roots can very easily be found, and the roots are given by this, minus of n plus or minus under root of b square minus 4ac. Now b is equal to n here, and so b square will be n square. And then I will write minus of 4 into a into c. a is 1, and so c is retained, and so I get n square minus 4c under the root side. And in the denominator, I have twice of a, which is twice of 1. So I've obtained this expression for x1 and x2. Now, the formula I've used here is this way. That is, ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. If I have such a quadratic equation, then I know that its roots are given by x1, x2 are then given by minus b plus or minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a. So here I have compared my a with 1 and b with n, and c is retained, and so I get this kind of an equation for x1 and x2. Well, now note that x1 minus x2 will give us 1 because two values of x, which are consecutive integers, satisfy this given equality. And so I can rewrite this as, this implies x2 minus x1 is equal to 1. So if we take x2 as the larger root and x1 as the smaller root, we have x2 minus x1 equal to 1 from this condition, because we have two consecutive integral solutions. And now applying this here, you will get, now if x2 is taken with this positive sign, then I will get x2 is equal to minus of n plus of under root of n square minus 4c by 2. Likewise, when you're talking of x1, now x1 can be taken as minus n minus of under root of n square minus 4c, the whole divided by 2. And now if I do x2 minus x1, I will get x2 minus x1 is equal to, note that minus n by 2 and plus n by 2 will cancel each other because I'm subtracting the 2. And then what will remain is under root of n square minus 4c. So x2 minus x1 is equal to under root of n square minus 4c. Well, but x2 minus x1 is also equal to 1. So I can say that this implies, so I will now further continue my sum here. And this will now imply under root of n square minus 4c is equal to 1. Because when I square both sides, I get x2 minus x1 is 1. And so squaring both sides, n square minus 4c will be equal to 1 square, which is 1. So I will now write n square minus 4c is equal to 1. Well, from here I know the value of c, and so I will substitute c here, and so I will get n square minus 4 times c. Well, c is this entire expression, so let us simplify c first. We are talking of c, and when we simplify c, we get an expression of this form. Now, c here is n into, or rather n plus 1, into 2n plus 1. Now, if you multiply throughout by 6, you get here a term, minus 3 into n plus 1. And then here, you will finally get 6 into 10 divided by 6, which will be minus 60 divided by 6. So here I'm writing the given value of c in this manner. 
Now if I simplify this, I should get a quadratic in n, so I get 2n square. Then I am left with some other n terms, and so if I combine all the n terms, here I'll get a 2n, and here I'll get a plus n, so 3n will cancel out the 3n here, and so I will get 2n square plus 1 minus 3 minus 60, the whole divided by 6 as the value of c. Well, from this I can further rewrite the value of c as, therefore c will be now equal to 1 by 6 will be retained out, then what will remain inside the bracket is 2n square minus 2 minus 60. Now this will be minus 62, so I get this as a value of c. Well, this can further be simplified and I will now write 1 by 3 into n square minus 31 is equal to c. So from here I get a value of c. And now if I put the value of c over here, I will get n square minus 4 into c is equal to 1. Now this c will be replaced by this entire term and so I will now get n square minus 31 upon 3 into 4 when subtracted from n square gives me 1. And so now having obtained this equation, I can further resolve this to find the value of n square. Now when I solve this equation, I get 3n square minus 4n square plus 4 into 31 which gives me 124. And then in the denominator I have a 3 which will go on the right hand side and become a 3 here. So I have obtained this equation that gives me the value of n square. And now if I take the terms on one side, I will get my answer n square is equal to 121. And so I have obtained the value of n square as 121. But here we have been asked to find the value of n and so we can now take square root on both sides and get n is equal to 11. So the final answer to this question is, this given equation has two consecutive integral solutions for the value of n given by 11. And so the option that we choose from the given four options is the fourth option and the answer to this question is n is equal to 11. So this is the final answer and we can report this answer as our final answer. And in the given question in set D, this fourth option is the correct option because this fourth option gives the value of n as equal to 11.